Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to Farming Simulator 22, and we are back on Elm Creek for another mod minute or so. And today's mod is going to definitely be something I am going to be including most certainly on maps in the future. And this is the Object Storage Mod by GTX Modding. Now, what is the Object Storage Mod, you might ask? Well, I'm glad you did. It basically it includes three things. It, there is a small covered storage. There is a normal covered storage or larger covered storage. And there is also shelving storage. Now for the large and the small covered storage units, they are for bales only. And, of course, the, the shelving storage units are for palletized items. But before we get into it and I kind of demo how to configure these things and what they do, let's take a quick peek in the store at where you can find them and how much they are. So if you go to Sheds and scroll on over, you'll see that you'll have the normal size covered bale stack, the small covered bale stack, and the shelf storage they do turn on center and you can also select different colors for them which is kind of handy if you have several down and you want to distinguish them a little bit easier I'll also show you another trick to making them a little bit more obvious on which one you're dealing with here in a minute we also have the small one and that is also color selectable. And we've also got the storage shelves, which are also color selectable. $1,200 for the large tent, $720 for the smaller, and $4,200 for each of the storage shelves. Now, the first thing you want to keep in mind is with the small covered storage buildings, or what I call the tents, the small tents, they only will accept 120 centimeter bales, square bales, that come from something like this Massey Ferguson 1840, which is in the base game. There's also some other modded balers out there that do 120s. And there's two ways to get into the GUI or the graphical user interface for all of these objects. And that is either hitting your escape key and going into the menu like you would for your settings and other things or if you walk up to the tent and hit the r key it'll also take you directly into the graphical user interface or the gui now in order to set each one up first thing you're going to do is we'll go up to this orange one here and we will hit our r key and you might be saying well brad how do i know which of the small ones i'm configuring well the mod author has done us a little bit of a favor and included a camera. So if we click on the first of the two small ones, hit the camera, we can see that's the tan one. So we don't want to configure that one. We're going to go over to the next small one, hit the camera, and that is the orange one. And this is the one we indeed want to configure. Now, when you go in and configure these, you can see that the small ones take two, will take and accept two different bail types. They have to be 120s. But if we click on configuration, you can see they will accept hay, grass, or straw 120s. And you can just simply select whichever kind of bale you want. And you say, I want hay 120s, confirm. And now it will take hay 120 centimeters and it'll take grass 120 centimeters. You can also make them both grass, both hay or both straw if you'd like. So if you're just dealing with grass bales, you can configure it to only just take grass. So I've got this orange one set up to take just the 120 grasses, and we're just gonna go ahead and toss those in there so you kind of get an idea on what it's doing. And it's just gonna stack them right up just like that. It also shows you in the menu your total object count and volume total as well. Now, if we want to pull those grass bales back out, 
all you simply have to do is look at this counter. So one of six. So we've got six total 120s in there. And let's say we want to spawn out 320 centimeter bales. We just select three, come down here and click spawn. And there they are. That simple. Spawned it back out. We can just pop them back in if we change our mind and call it good. This tent I have set up and configured for accepting hay and straw 120s. So let's go ahead and just dump these in there and you can kind of get an idea. Yep, I don't do things all fancy. I just get her done. And you can see here, did I say get her done? All right. You can see here that we've got straw and we've got hay bales. And again, if we go back into the GUI, it shows that we've got five straw, five hay. And of course we can spawn out a hay, maybe spawn out three straws. And there you go, back in business. And we'll just toss those back in there. Ideally, it's basically the same thing for the large. The only difference with the large covered tents is they only accept one type of bale at a time. You can't do multiple types. So let's go in and let's take a look at configuring one of those. Now, just to make sure, I'm going to select my camera and I see that we are looking at our blue stack, which is what I'm in front of. So we're going to configure that. I have it configured for 125 centimeter round bales. You can come down here to configuration. Now with the large tents, it's pretty much you can pick any other bale size and any other bale type besides the 120s. So you've got the full span of hay round and square, grass round and square, silage round and square, straw round and square, and wood chips. Now I have this blue tent set up for the 125 straws and as you can see just bring them on over and they'll auto stack for you right inside and you spawn them out the same way that we did the square ones down there and the same goes for the silage bales I'm just gonna go ahead and toss some of these in here and you can see that I have this pink tent set up for and configured for 240 centimeter silage bales. You can also see over here on the right, it gives us the count and our total volume. Now you might be saying, well, wait a minute, Brad, there's another covered bale stack here that says F58. What's going on there? Well, let's take a look at our camera. Whoa, where is that one located? Well, this is what I like about this mod too, is you can, let's say you've got a field that you're dedicating for grass work, which I do. So let's say I have field 58 way over here on the other side of the map. And this field, I just do grass work on. So I went ahead and I set up a tent. And as you can see, it also shows up here on the map. And I set up a tent there. And in fact, we can go ahead and spawn right to it. So while you are doing all of your grass work on this field, you can have a local tent right next to it to immediately store whatever bales you're collecting straight away in there. Now, the way I made it even easier too, and this is totally up to you, but you can also rename these. So if you go into our construction menu and we go over to here, like you're gonna sell it, right? There's a rename feature. So what I'm gonna do is and you can name it whatever you want. I just added F58 on the end of it to designate field 58. So that when I am looking at our GUI here, I can see straight away the covered bale stack for field 58. Just another option available to you if you wanna do that. And one other thing with these bale stacks that I haven't covered yet, and this also includes, and we'll, we'll go back to the uh, to the shelving units in a sec here. Let me turn on our help menu. Now you can see there it says disable markers. If you hit the N key, you can disable the zone markers here to give it a more, well, some players like a more natural look. They don't want those zone markers on there. And you can just hit it again to bring those back. And if you really want to get rid of everything, I guess you could even go into 
what is it, the settings, and you could disable or turn off these interactive zone markers, and those would be gone as well. So we could do this, and now you've got no markers delineating it. In fact, just out of curiosity, if we go into here and we go into landscaping and we go into plants and grass, yeah, very cool. So, I mean, you can really incorporate these things to look a lot more natural in the environment. If that's what you'd prefer. Well, very nice. Okay. Let's go take a quick look at our shelving units, though, because we haven't covered those, and we'll do those real quick. Let's pick a shelving unit. We'll spawn straight away over to it. So I've got two shelving units here, and just for time's sake, it's the same concept as our bale storage, only the shelving units take palletized items instead of bales. Now, from what I have tested and gathered, these units accept all the pallets that are available in the base game which means i don't think they will accept let's say potato pallets from the potato mod there's a couple of different potato mods out there i'm not i forget which one it is right now but it's got the the seed potatoes and you know the the, the main the standard potatoes I'm not sure it'll accept any of those type of pallets, and they will not accept loose material either. I've tested that by bringing over trailers of loose materials, and they don't accept those. They have to be palletized items, and like I said, from what I can gather, only palletized items that are in the base game. Now, I did test with bags, and it does work with bags, so you can bring bags over, and it'll accept those as well. Okay? So let's just take a quick peek at this one right here. We go into our menu and let's just check our camera so we know we're looking at the right one. And in fact, I think it looks to me like if you go up to the unit and hit the R key, it will take you straight to that unit. So that's kind of handy. So this one I have configured for sugar beets, poplar and wool. Now, if you want to, you can pick any of these, go into configuration, and you'll see the full list of, of palletized items that these shelves will accept. Now, the one thing that threw me off at first, I had to think about it, was this seed treating liquid. But that some of you may not have that because I believe that is part of the AGI DLC, if I'm not mistaken. So if you don't see that there, that's probably why you don't have it because you may not have the AGI pack installed or activated. But the rest of this stuff is pretty straightforward. All stuff you can buy in the store palletized. And if we walk over here, we can see that we've got some sugar cane. And I'm just going to manhandle that sugar cane. And you can see sugar cane gets stocked straight away on the first shelf, which, by the way, is set up for the first shelf. Second shelf is poplar. Third shelf is wool. So let's grab our poplar. And we'll snag her over. And it's second shelved it. And our wool will go up there on the top shelf. And it's the same thing for this shelf. I have it configured to do lime, solid fertilizer, and seeds. So we're just going to go ahead, put our seeds, go on the first shelf. Solid fertilizer, second shelf, lime, third shelf. And just like the bales, we can go in and we can spawn them out. And you can see we've got one pallet of seeds, one pallet of fertilizer, and one pallet of lime. And if we want to go ahead and spawn out the lime, we can just go ahead and spawn out the lime. And if we went, oops, we didn't want to do that, we'll put the lime back. Not a big deal. And that is really the gist of the object storage mod by GTX Modding. I'm pretty sure I've covered just about everything. But if you do have any questions or if I miss something, feel free to leave it in the comments below. I'd certainly be interested in hearing from you. Definitely check this mod out, though. It's on the Giants. It's in the Giants Mod Hub. And uh, make sure you rate it to uh, the modders do rely on our ratings, so let's make sure we're all giving them a good rating for their hard work. 
And thanks again for checking out another Mod Minute or so video here. You guys all take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and I will see you again real soon.